good, Lions fans? Joe Jackson 98 here, and now it's time for day two of the Lions draft picks. Uh, we'll go over the round two pick, Jahani Tavai, a linebacker out of the University of Hawaii. Um, I'm not quite as optimistic about this pick as I was the first pick. Not because of the player. I love the player. I think he's tough, physical, and a great fit for Patricia's scheme. But I think we had a more pressing need that we could have easily addressed and we missed a home run opportunity. For that reason, I give this pick a C. Um, so to talk about why I like this player, um, he stands in there at 6'2", 250 pounds. He's very physical. He's got very good hands. He, you know, he can jam tight ends. He can get off of blockers. He can take on blockers and actually push them back. So, I mean, that's kind of a lost start in this day and age of football. You see a lot of linebackers with speed, coverage abilities. But in this draft class, this was a rarity. Someone who can actually stuff up the middle, stop running backs, um, take on blockers. And he's also pretty versatile as well. I mean, he can stuff the middle, but he can also rush the passer. He's great off the edge. If you go watch his highlight films, like he he got 17 and a half sacks in his four-year career. He often beats tackles off the edge, which is a great component to this scheme, kind of like what Devin Kennard can do. It's almost like he's a hybrid between Kennard and uh, Christian Jones. You know, Jones is more the big stocky guy. Kennard's more the edge rusher. This guy's kind of a little bit of both, so has a lot of depth at that position and could possibly help out Gerard Davis because, you know, we run a 3-4 scheme, so we really needed that fourth linebacker, and I think that's what Tavai can bring to the table. Um, other things, he's very good at finding the ball as well. You rarely see him over pursue, but you, but you, you don't see a lack of aggressiveness either. Like he's always where he's supposed to be. Doesn't miss out on a whole lot of assignments. He's just, he's got a lot of football smarts. That's what I like to call it. He just, he doesn't go to the wrong place. He, he can diagnose plays very well. And that's what makes a middle linebacker such a valuable position. He, it's almost like he's the quarterback of the defense and you know, everyone's saying, oh, but he played against Mountain West offenses and and this and that. But the thing is, like, the guys in front of him were also Mountain West players, the Hawaii defensive line. And even against good teams like Michigan, who they played a few years ago, Tavai really stood out, um, you know, because, you know, the defensive line is supposed to protect linebackers, you know, from getting washed down. But uh, even with that, Tavai still was able to make a lot of plays. Um, but talking about the negatives of this player, maybe why he wasn't projected to go so high. If you don't know, Tavai was projected by some to be even as late as a sixth rounder. Many thought probably fourth rounder was more realistic. I would have been fine with this pick in the third round, to be honest with you, and I think we could have got him. But uh, part of the reason why his stock isn't too high is because he doesn't have a whole lot of explosiveness or a whole lot of speed. Uh, his 40 time was 4.86. That's kind of underwhelming for a linebacker. You'd hope that someone you'd ask to drop into zone coverage could run a little bit faster than that. Um, I know he's a big, he's got a big frame, but it kind of shows you that he's mostly a run stopper, not really a guy you can drop into coverage or cover man to man. That's what I heard is that he really struggles with man to man coverage and he wasn't really asked to do that. And the thing was, that was a big need for the Detroit Lions. Uh, Gerard Davis has struggled mightily with covering receivers. You saw it last year, that game against the Cowboys. Uh, Zeke Elliott just easily caught a ball over his shoulder and that was the game. And there were many other instances, too. The fact is, Davis has really struggled the pat the first two years. Also, another concern of Tavai is that he's not really a great tackler. I mean, you don't have to make the big hit all the time. That's not what this guy's going to do. He's not going to he's not gonna make these jaw-dropping hits that make you go, whoa, this guy is an old-school football player. You know, he just makes the tackle. But the thing is, like, his technique is a little bit questionable at times. Uh, if you watch some of his highlights, he... He like makes a lot of ankle tackles, a lot of you know jersey grabbing tackles. And the thing is, if you're going to tackle an elite running back like Adrian Peterson or Todd Gurley or Kareem Hunt, you're you're going to miss a lot, and that's something he's going to have to work on. I think Patricia can help out with that. Um, but otherwise, those are kind of the two things that Davis struggles with: tackling, pass coverage, and you know Tavai offers at least some run support. Um, and he offers a pass rushing ability as well. So that's definitely a good thing. Um, some other things that hurt his draft stock. Supposedly he had an incident earlier in the in the season which he was arrested. But if you go back and look at the incident, um, 
it actually looks like he was trying to do the right thing. He, uh, he ran into a guy who was a drunkard and was, uh, supposedly punching his fiance. So Tavai wanted to just put an end to that. Um, so he got arrested, but he wasn't actually formally charged. Um, another thing that hurt his draft stock was his shoulder injury caused him to miss the senior bowl, which is a big miss because that's a, that's a time when a lot of scouts want to check out, um, exactly what players they're looking at. So overall, this pick was a good one in terms of the player, but not in terms of where we picked him. And, you know, the fact is Tease Tabor has really struggled at the cornerback position, and we really needed a replacement there. Uh, you know, you can talk about developing Tabor all you want, but the simple fact of the matter is he's not fast enough. His 40 time wasn't very good, and it's showing. He's getting beat a lot, and receivers are getting behind him. They're running circles around him. The fact is he's going to need a lot of work. And to pass up on Greedy Williams, who's almost a sure starter day one, it would have been a steal in the second round. To pass up on him is a little bit questionable. Literally, if we wanted to trade up, if we feel like the Patriots are going to pick Tavai, which is what reports are saying, we literally I would have been fine if we traded our third round pick, traded up a little bit ahead of the Patriots, then picked Tavai, because I don't think anybody else was going to pick him. Um, but otherwise, this could have been done a lot differently. We missed an opportunity to get an elite corner, and that's very disappointing. We missed the opportunity to pick that corner because we picked a guy who was probably going to be picked in the third or fourth round or by the Patriots next. But there were definitely other things we could have done. And the fact is we still have, after day two, we still have a gaping need at the cornerback position. I mean, there's just not a lot of depth there. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. I'll be back here with the next pick, Will Harris. Adios.